Because people are okay with ignoring their significant other. No. <laughs> so obviously, I want to go to Ghana. Yeah. I would like to visit Accra. What is that one thing that you, you saw people doing and you were like, damn, I want to do this too? Well, first of all, I'm not really a party person, but I right. was seeing a lot of parties half a day. You gotta get some of these girls. Hey. <laughs> A lot of people who are born in America don't have passports. Yeah. I heard you saying you have heart issues. Mm -hmm. What happened to you? Talking about your heart, have you ever been in love before? Yes, I could probably do say I'm in love right now. Oh. My face is hey. sweaty. Would you recommend somebody or would you advise anybody to <sighs> participate in the pageant? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of The Journey Show. What is your story? We all have unique stories and I know our unique stories define and make us who we are. Join me as we, you know, we uncover the stories of people from all corners of the world on The Journey Show. My name is Nana Adum Jr. Today our guest is uh, Priscilla. In 2021, Priscilla was a contestant for African Most Beautiful USA. We're going to hear her story today and you know see how far she went and what she has to tell us today all right priscilla how are you doing today how are you doing i'm okay how are you how's everybody doing matter of fact this is your camera. oh this is, sorry <laughs> <laughs> how's everybody doing matter of fact we, we are doing amazing so good to have you here it's so great to be here get to speak a little bit about my past experiences current experiences so i'm here to share about all of that so we're going to see how that goes today yeah, that's right when i when i when i asked about doing this with you mm -hmm. i initially spoke with your mom about this she said yeah. you're not going to do it you know it's true <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't gonna do it because I, it's so funny because i'm a good person to speak to about things like have good conversations but mm -hmm. as far as coming to the camera to sit down and yeah. talk, I'm like, uh, <laughs> that's not you. <laughs> no, that's not me. <laughs> we could talk in closed doors, but right? I just, I feel like it always just depends on how the conversation with the person goes. So right. it shouldn't be too bad today. Amazing, sure. amazing. We happy to have you here. Thank you. How have you been today? I'm okay, a little tired, but we're here. We're making it through. It's Wednesday, just uh, pushing through. <laughs> it's just Wednesday. You feel a little tired already? Yes, it's been a hectic weekend to the start of the week, and then also I'm in school as well. Okay. So it's a lot. Besides school, what makes it you know hectic for you? Um, so my mom does have a restaurant that she just recently opened. Okay, so your mom has a restaurant. Yes. What's the name? Um, uh, the Eleanor's Bar and Restaurant. So you guys should come through, come through. Come wow. Through. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should come through. We have food, drinks, everything, good vibes, music and all. And I'm always here. So you can always find me here as well. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, you know, we'll get, we'll get back to the restaurant <laughs> business and what you do in the restaurant. We will talk about that. All right. Obviously, you were born in the U.S., right? Mm -hmm. Originally, your parents are from Ghana and all that. Yes. You have something to say about that? Um... My parents are originally from Ghana. Though I was born here, I was born in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've been raised up in the Bronx, uh, specifically in the South Bronx. And then well, when I turned 16, I moved to Uptown, so around my mom's current restaurant right now. So if you know the 5 train, the 2 train, around there. So that's where I reside. But it's been okay so far. Um, just trying to push through school right. and figure out where my head is at right now since I am a young adult, so there's a lot of stuff happening in life. <laughs> so you just got to take one day at, at a time, time, one day at a time. Right. To do work alone and then to do school on top of it is already like a lot. So imagine right. working so much more than doing school. With I, agree. Yeah. I agree. I <laughs> agree. And you have, you have a beautiful relationship with your family, right? Yes, I do. You yes, live I with do. them right now? I do live with them just trying to get my like i said life together mm -hmm. do live with my family specifically my mom i live with my little brother uh, my aunt and my baby cousin and occasionally i live with my sister she goes to boarding school that's the only reason why <laughs> <laughs> occasionally live with her so like whether it's christmas break you know this regular school break yes. spring break summer break but sh i live with my family what, what is the favorite thing you do with a family um honestly 
it really be me and my siblings that are always together. Mm -hmm. So whether it's me and my sister always having plans to do something, making TikTok videos. Okay, you make she, TikTok videos. She's like queen of uh, TikTok. And if anybody knows when TikTok used to be musically, like, uh -huh. she's the queen of that. What's her name? Uh, Gabby. Okay. Gabriella, but we all call her Gabby. Okay. And then my little brother, we just... I don't want to say pick on him, <laughs> but, you know, try to get him to mm, a little bit. Right. You know, you have two older sisters. You can't be, you can't be shy. I heard you talking about your sisters, your brothers. How many are you? So it's me, my little sister, mm -hmm. and then my little brother. I'm the oldest out of You three. are the oldest? Yeah. Move. Man, it's hard. I keep telling you, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> It's hard, That's you hard. know. You're the oldest. Uh -huh. You practically, especially when you're growing up, you right. kind of the second mom, second mom to them because they they see you as like, oh, she's the oldest, right. or you're the um, oldest one among us. So I know to expect this from you, or I know I can come to you for help or something like, like that. Like money, <sighs> my sister. Oh my gosh, <laughs> she's the one who comes to me for money. Just last week, she's like. Hey, girl. I'm like, what? What's up? What's up? I'm like, what do you want from me? She's like, I can't say hi to my sister. I'm like, no, because it's never just a hi with I you. I know what you want. She's like, okay, fine. Can you send me $50? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that sounds correct. Right. Yes. With my brother sometimes, since he's a little bit more quiet, he won't really openly ask me for something. Mm -hmm. So even if I see that he needs a haircut, I'd be like, hey. His name is Jaden, by the way. I'd be like, hey, Jay, do you want me to give you money to get a haircut? Or I'll just simply be like, hey, this day I want you to go get a haircut. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you some money to go get your haircut. That's nice so, of you. Yeah. You gotta, you're my brother. You got to look sharp. You're right. You're gotta, right. got to get some of these girls. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> You've been to Ghana before? Unfortunately, no. Don't oh. kill me. Don't kill nah, me. No, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Don't kill I'm me. Kill you. Yes. Yes. All my years. You've never been to I've Ghana before? I've never been to Ghana do you, before. Do you plan to? I really want to. Um, I think the only reason why people be like, oh, why haven't you been to Ghana yet? Mm -hmm. And it's just mm -hmm. simply because of the fact that growing up, um, it was really just my mom and she did everything for us as right. far as us going to school paying for everything so me and my siblings so me my sister my brother we've always been in private schools and okay. private schools aren't free Ooh, your mom must They're. be rich your parents must be rich rich <laughs> now to take so, you to private school in this yeah, country because where we grew up um in the south bronx mm -hmm. it was either between there was this public school that was behind the house mm -hmm. and then this catholic school i don't know what it is with public schools but it was one of them schools that have multiple schools within the school uh. yeah <laughs> And currently, the college that I go to is not a really big college, but it's also private. So, wow. exactly. So, that was primarily a great factor as to why we had not been to Ghana, just mm. because of the expenses as far as right. taking care of bills, school, and then to buy a ticket for everybody to go. That's at least, you know, Ghana tickets aren't cheap either. They're not, they're not <laughs> to, especially in December. Uh, to like, and then again, to buy for the whole family to go. So, but it is a plan of mine to go. Maybe I might have to like branch out and adventure on my own to go, right. save up my own money to go. I, I but think so. Definitely, it's uh, on my bucket list to go. You should. What type of Ghanaian would I be to not go back home? You should. Right? <laughs> and looking at you know all the the beautiful things and the bad things going mm. on in Ghana, like I yeah. know you see or hear I've some of them on social, social yeah. media. Does it you know encourage you to to visit? Um, I mean, a part of me still obviously wants to visit because clearly it is the place that. I'm originally resided from. Yes, I was born here, but that's my background. That's my history. Though there's things happening in there, I don't want to miss the opportunity to never like go back home. Right. What's going on is a little bit sad in a sense because it's just like there's so many things I feel like that could have been helped to not happen in a sense. I think too many of our people back home are looking at what's going on here and think it's cool and mm -hmm. trying to copy it over there. Don't do that. <laughs> there's like, there's a whole, America and Ghana are two different places. So I just feel like, I don't want to say we should stay in the lane, but we should go about things certain, like a correct way if we want to branch out or be a little bit different. I don't know. But I would have never not want to go there. It's still a bucket dream. Where do you want to go? Kumasi, Akras, <laughs> the Central Region, the Volta, and all You know, that? I, if it was up to me, you uh -huh. see, like some people, when they go to Africa to be specific, right. they tour a little bit of everywhere. Obviously, I want to go 
to Ghana. Yeah. I would like to visit Accra. Accra. Yeah. What is that one thing that you saw people doing and you were like, damn, I want to do this too? Well, first of all, I'm not really a party person, but I was right. seeing a lot of parties half a oh, day. What? <laughs> <laughs> this is the first cause. You keep yeah. telling me you are the... You are an introvert. Like, I'm literally an introvert. Anyway, so. I'm literally an introvert. So it's so weird. I was seeing it all over social media, mm -hmm. Instagram, TikTok, especially this past Christmas when everybody that weren't even Ghanaians going to Ghana and I see them having a great time partying. So it was that's kind of what I want to experience. They yeah. said they will go out late at night and mm -hmm. don't come back yeah, home until 7 a.m. Yeah. I want to experience yes. that for the one time, you know? This is one thing that um, my producer, Aru, wanted to know about you. He, mm. he said he wants to know your biggest fear. Oh, my biggest fear. You know, it's weird. Mm -hmm. For a while, my biggest fear used to be heights. It's weird because I'm a tall person. If anybody knows me, I'm 5'10". <laughs> so to be scared of fights, it's a bit... <laughs> Yo. So but... you, were, you were scared of heights? Yes. For, for the longest, I was actually scared of heights, which is weird. Like, you would never catch me going on a roller coaster. No, no, no. I can't do that. I used to have another big fear, and it was probably like worrying about my heart because i have a heart condition so i feel like that used to be a big fear of mine mm. but as i'm getting older and i understand this is who i am and this is like what i'm going through like health wise i've started to accept okay this is how i am this is not really a fear of mine right. i'm just different from everybody else so it's okay True. to be a little bit different from somebody else so right now i don't really have a big fear because all I know is just I want to take one day at a time right. to ensure that I know that like, I'll be okay mm -hmm. instead of dwelling on everything. Because I feel like if you dwell on a lot of stuff, that's how new fears are created. And I don't want to dwell on something too long because that's when you become a little bit too sad or miserable. I can't. I don't that. have the energy for <laughs> sad and miserable. You have to take, was it, what's the saying? Take the day by the horns or mm -hmm. by, take the bull by the by horns. The yeah. yeah. And just see how your day goes. Because if you stay dwelling on things, you're just going to be a miserable person. Yeah. And that's how, like, fears are created. So that's something I recently learned. So I'm just trying to not have too many things that I'm scared about. You know, I heard you saying you have heart issues. Mm -hmm. What happened to you? So I was actually born with a heart defect call Tetralogy of Fallout, or some people say a Fallout, uh, T-O-F. Um, it's... It, if it was just the murmur in my heart, I think I would have never had to undergo surgery. Um, but there was other components in my chambers and all the good heart terminology that a lot of people might not know um, that was also occurring um, in my heart. So um, when I was 11 months old, they had to put me under, do some surgery, you know, the good stuff. <laughs> you know you know one thing I like about you? It's like... You you see it as uh, you know as an issue, but you don't let it bother you. Yeah, you don't I have I a can't, problem talking about it. I can't it. because like even sometimes people be like, "Oh, I'm sorry." Yeah. Why are you sorry? You know, this is this is the way I was born. Yeah. Why why are you sorry about it? Like this is this is what I know as mm -hmm. regular. This is what I know to be normal for me. Right. And you know what your heart is is what every almost a lot of people have. That's what's normal for you. Right. So don't be sorry. This is this is what I know as my everyday life, you know. Yeah. But you gotta. My friends be like, "Bro, are you okay?" I'm yeah. like, "Yeah, of course." <laughs> <laughs> That's I, good. I could be like, "Yeah, you know, I have an appointment tomorrow. I have yeah. an MRI scan." MRI scan. And they're like, "And you, you're okay?" I'm like, "It's life, man." <laughs> It is what it is. It is what it is. Because <laughs> even um, I was actually honestly supposed to get um, mm -hmm. another surgery, but it's being delayed right now just because of insurance issues. But I know when I had went to my appointment to basically get the surgery like in place mm -hmm. and everything, get a date. The doctor is literally explaining everything that she will be doing mm -hmm. in the surgery. I was like, okay. Mm. All right, so how about this? Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. And how is this going to be? And I was like, oh, okay, that's not that bad, oh, I don't yeah. think. And she looked at my face. She was like, are you okay? <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> She's like, I've never seen someone so, like, 
chilled about yeah. the fact that they have to get heart surgery, surgery again. Yeah. And then my mom was also at that appointment that day. She was just like, oh, no, no, because, you know, I'm Monday born. So mm. she's like, oh, no, no. You talking about it so nonchalantly, like so calm. And she would ask, my mom would ask the doctor questions. I'm like, don't, don't worry. worry about and it. the doctor is like, I think she has the right to wear if she wants to. She is your mom at the end of the day. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, so when can we get this surgery? I think it's a denial thing also. I just want to get it done out the way. Right. Boom, let's go. And if I have to do the next one, let's go. I don't want to be like, oh my God. I have to get surgery. Oh, my God. That, you're yeah. wasting your time trying to be sad, you know? Yes, there's some days I'm not as giddy as I am mm -hmm. right now. I will be down, but it can't last forever. Like, nothing can really last forever unless you let it last forever, I feel. Talking about your heart, have you ever been in love before? <sighs> I knew this was going to come. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... As a young woman, I should say, I've at least once in your life, or once even in a, your life. A, or even as a young man, mm -hmm. I feel like you go through something where you once thought you were in love, or like, oh my gosh, yeah. I could see myself with this person mm -hmm. for ever and ever. Um, no, I hate to break it to you, that was not the case, <laughs> and I don't think that was not the case. <laughs> that was not the case. I think I was just in delusion. Oh yeah, I feel like I was in delusion to think, oh. And also, I was young, you know. Like how to, old? <clears throat> we're not gonna speak. About okay, that. okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it happened. I thought mm -hmm. I was in love. You thought you were in love? Oh, it was definitely not okay. love. Uh, currently, <laughs> let's fast forward into 2024. Okay. <laughs> um, yes, I could probably do say I'm in love right now. My oh, face is. Hey. <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> I could probably. Not I could. I am okay. right now. Yes, I'll be lying if I said I wasn't. Yes, I'm in love. So you right ain't love right now. Yeah. Ooh. Yes, I am. And it's, I feel like it happens when you're not looking for somebody. Yeah. Um, I can't say that uh, the person, mm -hmm. the young, the y lucky young fellow, mm -hmm. um, everything's good. Nothing's bad, yeah. you know. I get treated well. I also treat him with respect. I feel like respect is the number one thing when it comes to love or anything like that. If there's no respect, I'm sorry. That's true. <laughs> I, keep, I keep saying that. Mm. You know, and I, I, personally, I feel like respect is underrated. It really you know, is, especially in this generation. They true. think... Like, I feel like this generation speaks so much on respect, but I don't yeah. think they know what respect right. is. Right, right. Because, <laughs> mm. yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> because um, when I first met the person that mm -hmm. I'm currently in love with, I was like, okay, this is just somebody saying that they like me. Yeah. I was like, okay. I was okay not being in a relationship. I was, I was, I was chilling, you yeah. know? <laughs> the younger, chilling. Yeah. And it was caught me when I least suspected because I wasn't looking for anything. And me and this person has been together for almost four years. Mm. And people ask me, oh, Priscilla, you're practically married. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm like, they're like, oh, you've been with them, this person for so long. Yeah. You haven't had no issues, mm -hmm. no nothing. I won't put all of my business out there, but I will just say that there's not always ups. Right. To relation. There's up and downs. It's up to you as a person to be like, I know this is a person I really like. Right. I want to make things work. Let's push through all the good and bad problems that we have. And if something happens, we can communicate about That's it. Right. If we don't, yes, if we don't agree on something, we could talk about something. And fix it. Exactly. Or if we're having a bad day, instead of like keeping it to ourselves and ignoring that person, because people are okay with ignoring their significant other. No. <laughs> no, and I feel like that's where a lot of issues spark from. Because a lot of people, they come to me and they're like, oh, um, yeah, I can never talk to a guy unless he has money. Mm. Or I can never talk to a guy unless he don't pay this or he don't pay that. Or maybe that's your standards. Mm -hmm. But be for real. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of girls might attack me for this. But like, be for real. Like, what do you really want? But I just say, if somebody is looking for somebody, mm -hmm. 
take it one day at a time. Uh-huh. When you're not looking, that's when that person is going to come knocking on your door, just like how I did for you. When you're not looking, that's when, when you're that not person looking, yeah. come knock on your door. Doing I'm that. glad that you keep talking about respect because, mm-hmm. you know, personally, that's one thing that I feel like, you know, we talk about love, love, love here and there, but mm-hmm. I think respect. Hey, respect because if I say that you know you're you my partner and I like you or I want to spend the rest of my life with mm-hmm. you, I have to respect your background what you like it, to eat yes you know, oh my religion, goodness yes you know what you want to study what you want to achieve in life and all that like mm-hmm. there are levels to this you know no I definitely agree especially you said something about respecting your past if the person that you're currently with also does not respect your past mm-hmm. or has some type of grudge towards yeah. your past no right. run you keep, bringing it, you keep bringing it out run <laughs> that's no because i also feel that's why are you if i'm not dwelling on it why are you dwelling on it yes. so much and i think that's why things are personally going good for me in the mm. current relationship respected both each other's past that's right respect each other both now mm-hmm. we both respect each other as a person whether I respect myself or whether he respects himself. A lot of people don't respect themselves. And that's what happened with the first person that I thought I was mm. in love with. I didn't have that respect for myself. That's yeah. why I had to take a bunch of steps back and say, I need to find my self-respect again and my self-love. And when I was understanding um, the self-love and things like that, I made it to I made it to become a reminder for myself. Mm-hmm. So I actually engraved it in my ring, mm. self-love. I put my whole name, so I put Priscilla Asifwa, mm. love yourself, right. inside my ring. And not a as lot a of people, reminder, as a like reminder that. for yeah. myself, because I have really lost it. Yeah. <laughs> I really <laughs> lost it. So I put it in the ring for a reminder to give myself, like, you have to love yourself. You yeah. have to have self-respect. Good. Yeah. That's the idea of, you know, getting older scare you? Um... The idea of getting older, I will say I'm not in no rush right now. (laughs) I'm still in my very, very early 20s. I'm not in the rush to grow up, but I think I personally, Mm -hmm. I understand that I have a problem where is I want everything done in a certain way to the point where I think I'm going crazy. Mm. I know I... I want this by this time. I think I'm just so stuck on the fact that I want a lot of things done by a certain age. Mm. So I don't want time to go by too fast. Yeah, okay. So So maybe I'm a little scared to get a little older if I don't have the things that I want to get done. Yeah. That if you understand what I mean. Yeah, I do. Now, fast forward. Let's go. Let's go to um, 2021. Mm. African most beautiful USA. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was a strong sack. <laughs> what do you want to know? Tell what, me. Tell me. What do you want to know? First of all, what inspired you to get on that? Do you really project? want me? Do you do you want me to keep it really honest to you guys? I want to know your experience. everything, the experience. Yes. Okay. I want to know your experience. First of first, all, what, mm-hmm. first, what made me decide to yes. do? pageantry mm-hmm. i'm gonna be real with you be guys real i'm gonna keep me. it i'm keep gonna, keep, honey with me. I'm gonna keep it a stock real quick okay. it was my mom <laughs> <laughs> hold on hold on hold on hold on because not in a day will you catch me do pageantry oh. <laughs> it was my mom so it was your mom's idea oh man let me tell you guys <laughs> <sighs> let me tell you Growing up, stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. Growing up, like a lot of people have told me, oh, you could be a model. Oh, yeah. You're tall. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was a little slimmer. Everyone's like, you could be a model. And growing up, when I was a little younger, my mom used to take me to these modeling auditions or take oh, pictures really? or photo shoots like that. Mm-hmm. So I think it's always something that she wanted she sees me in to you. yeah and me being tall just made it 10 times where it's like you yeah you're going to do modeling you're going to do modeling you know so uh as i got older yeah the modeling is cute you know or whatever but yeah. i turned into the more athletic mm. side like so more sports mm-hmm. basketball volleyball 
I played basketball, but volleyball was more of my 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 dream yeah. dive sport. I love volleyball so mm -hmm. much. So doing pageants and especially pageants, you know, modeling and runway is yeah. different from pageants. Right. Pageants, you're like smiling, yeah. waving, yeah. walking, speak. Oh no. No. No, I don't. So I your mom encouraged you. Mm, courage. I think she kind of made me do it. Oh, yeah. I didn't really have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> I just, one day was coming, because I was working. One day came from work. Oh, no, no. I signed you up for this pageant. She actually he registered. Me. Yeah, oh. she registered me. Huh. I did not register myself because I would have <laughs> never done it. <laughs> I would have never done it. But That's you it. ended up becoming the first runner up, right? I did. Uh -huh. No. Now you got you got registered, right? You did your audition. Mm -hmm. How how did the audition go? Um, the audition was okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it was nothing too crazy. Yeah, I really just spoke about. It was a long time ago, but I do remember speaking about what I was currently doing in life. Mm -hmm. What if I was in school? What are my hobbies? What are right. my interests? You know. Regular pageant stuff that they ask you right. before you show them your pageant walk, I should say. What was my best talent? All the regular stuff. Got to know the girls a bit. It was okay. Mm -hmm. It was. I think I was just so stuck in my ways that that's not something that I wanted to do. Yeah. So I was yeah. there, but I wasn't there because mm. I did not want to be there. Mm. If I'm being, I did not. Want it never. To be there. It never occurred to you like, oh, you know what? Let me just accept this and no, you know. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> And I knew that was going to be a long-term problem as far as the pageant keeps going on. Mm -hmm. so it was supposed to be, yes, Africa most beautiful. But a lot of us African girls that were there, 95% of us were Ghanaian. Mm. So we can't all represent Ghana. You represented? Mauritania. Mauritania, okay. And as we got closer to the pageant, man, oh man. That's when they, everybody just started to piss me off. That's everybody when, started pissing you everybody off? Everybody started pissing me off. Really? Because I already wasn't feeling the pageant and then mm -hmm. I can't deal with it. Like, okay. I can't. And I cannot deal with kissing. I cannot do it. Call me a prideful person if you want because of that. I just, I can't do it. I mm. cannot do it. Yes, I'm Ghanaian. I was born and raised in the Bronx. But I don't know what it is with our people sometimes with entitlement. Mm -hmm. I feel, especially a lot of the African adults, there's a lot of entitlement as it goes. Mm -hmm. Or we're just simply stuck in our ways. You cannot be an American and expect to still abide by the rules that you grew up with. No, sweetie, you're in a different country. You're around different people. And I think a lot of the people in the pageant did not understand that. So the pageant, maybe some people, like other people had their good experience, but me personally- no, tell me any, anything that you liked in general, anything that you were like, okay, well, oh, oh I kind of like this. Or the only good thing was Kofi Kanata was there. Okay. That was the only- <laughs> That was the only good thing I could say. What did the production actually do with you as the first runner after the pageant? Actually, there was a few things they wanted us to do, and it was just more so of going to DC. I forgot what's there, but it was a place where a lot of um, headmasters or yeah. whatever have gone, and they would come to the United States mm -hmm. to reside for something important. Mm. So other than that, the first one, as far as the first runner up go, I didn't really do a lot of the stuff. The second runner-up, she's the one that ended up doing a lot of these things with the girl who actually won. So it was really the girl who won and the second runner-up who did a lot of the events. Mm. They had went to Ghana after mm -hmm. the pageant. I didn't go just simply because of the fact that I didn't have a passport at that time. Okay. It, a lot of people find it crazy, but a lot of people who are born in America don't have passports. Yeah, hey, that's true. <laughs> no, that's true. It is true. We have a lot of Americans not, without passports. I did not get a passport until I turned, I think... 19 mm. so and that was later on the year you think that was when he pushed you to get your your passport what the pageant yes. a part of it yeah but i'm getting older a girl needs to travel True. a bit you know <laughs> i still haven't been out the country yeah i, have, I haven't been out the country <laughs> would you recommend somebody or would you advise anybody to <sighs> participate in the pageant <laughs> <laughs> okay hear me out if you're a pageant girl, go for it. Mm -hmm. What are you, you know, looking forward to achieve in the next five, ten years in your life? Um, the next thing I'm honestly trying to ch achieve is be done with school because I can't do it no more. I'm actually very tired of school. As I'm almost 
to the finishing line. I'm just done with school. So be done with school. What are you what are you studying in school? I'm studying healthcare systems management. Healthcare so system management. management. Okay. Yes. So a lot of people don't know what that is. That is basically I work behind the scenes in the hospital. Mm -hmm. I could go either the hospital route or I can go outside the hospital route. Right. But I want to go in the hospital route. So I'm behind the scenes in the hospital dealing with a lot of the monies. So that also means dealing with insurance monies, dealing with the doctor's money. This is like, yeah. this is the, the third time you said money. You yeah, <laughs> money. <laughs> you need it, man. You need right. it because it's, 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 it's hard in these streets. It's uh -huh. hard. So, What is the one thing that you want to tell girls out there of your age who are trying to make it in life? I was saying, like, love yourself. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds very typical, but... Love yourself, take it one step at a time, and don't let nobody tell you no when it comes to the right thing um, or what may be right to you. Have a little bit of an open ear mm -hmm. to a lot of things. Uh, I didn't mention that much, but at my mom's restaurant, I'm the person that makes all the drinks, so I'm the bartender. You're the bartender at your yes. mom's restaurant. Yes, I am. So and being, you go to school as well. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> but being the bartender, you're kind of... A therapist to other people mm -hmm. you hear people out you make their drinks you know what they like and you hear about their day their yeah. life story what they're going through so i'm not saying go to the bar <laughs> and drink but there's people who might just be a simple stranger to you that will be able to help and guide you so take one day at a time try and hear people out even if you don't want to hear it after they speak, you can go about your way thing, um, as in if you want to listen to them or if you don't want to listen to them. Mm -hmm. Things will get better. Though things might not be seeming great right now, but eventually it will get better. Right. It's not going to stay forever. And if it does, you might want to change your course about certain things, your aspect about a lot of things. And you could go from there, but whatever you're going through in life that is bad, it won't always be there. Mm -hmm. It will get better soon. It will get better soon. Priscilla, thank you so much for making time for us, okay? You're welcome. So, you know, it was, it was nice having you here. I think oh, we should do, do this once again. We should. <laughs> <laughs> it was so nice having you here. <laughs> thank you. Guys, thanks for watching The Journey Show. As always, this is your host, Nana Adam Jr. Watch The Journey on YouTube, on Adam Studios, and, you know, let's connect on social media. Thank you once again for watching this. Thank you guys. Bye.